much, a long march, and twenty years in store, when I left my girl in Clusium beside the threshing floor. The girls of Spain were honey sweet, and the golden girls of gold, and the Christian faith was soft as her, so all the heart in thrall. But the girl I kissed at Clusium, kissed and left at Clusium, the girl I kissed at Clusium, Sometime about the year 117 AD, the Ninth Legion, the Hispana, which was stationed at Eberachum, where York now stands, marched north to deal with a rising among the Caledonian tribes, and was never heard of again. Marcus Flavius Aquila, Pilus Prior Centurion of the 4th Gaulish Auxiliaries, the 2nd Legion, come to relieve this garrison. Quintus Hilarion, Commander of the Garrison. Enter. Open up! Forward! Gaulish. A pretty raw-boned looking lot. Newly joined up, I should think. No battle honors in the standard. I can't expect much here. Use some luck. skies with you, but by her belief, don't expect it to last. Well, is there? It rains always here in the west. By the time you served your year here, you'll have toadstools sprouting out of your ears, and not from the damp alone. From what else, then? Oh, lack of company, for one thing. I'm a sociable man myself. I like my friends around me. Ah, well, I'm on leave tomorrow. Long leave, lovely leave, among the flesh pots of Durinum. My father retired and settled there a few years ago. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. I suppose, coming from home, you'll have no one here to go to when your leave falls due. I have an uncle in uh, Kaleva, though I haven't met him yet. Certainly no one at home I'd want to spend my leave with. Father and mother both dead? Yes. My father went with the Ninth Legion. The Ninth? You mean when the Hispana... Disappeared, yes. Twelve years ago. Oh, so. That's bad. A deal of ugly stories, though, are still are for that matter. And, of course, they did lose the eagle. Since not a man of the Legion came back, it is scarcely a matter for wonder that neither did the eagle. Surely not. I wasn't blowing on your father's honor. Keep your feathers on, Marcus. Yes, you're right. The Ninth Hispana did have a bad name. I can remember my mother saying, just after my father had been appointed to command the first cohort, if only it had been any other legion. The first cohort, then he was virtually second in command of the legion itself. Yes, and therefore charged with protecting the eagle. We had a farm in Etruria, near Clusium. I lived there quietly with my mother while my father soldiered in Judea and Egypt. Then he came to Britain. We were about to join him when rebellion broke out in one of the northern tribes. He marched north to deal with it and never came marching back again. Mother died soon after that. 
see. This is what brings you to Britain. Partly. If ever anything becomes known of the Lost Legion, it will be known here first. It may even be that I shall find out something myself. I asked to be sent here. Even though it meant starting with an auxiliary instead of a line of battle cohort. Don't be deceived by the lack of battle honors on our standard. They're a command to be proud of. We'll have our gilded laurel wreath and victor's crown yet. Tell me, what does one do here apart from growing toadstools? <laughs> Is there good hunting? Oh, good enough. So one thing to be said for this particular corner of the empire. The boar, wolf, the forest swarms with deer. There are several hunters in the town below who will take you out for the price of a day's work. Unwise to go alone, of course. Of course. Second watch. Best prepare for inspection. Have you any particular advice for me? I am new to this country. Oh, yes. I have. If no one has warned you already, it's about the native priest kind, the wandering druids. And if one of them appears in the district, you get the least idea there's one about, double your guard. Good advice, that is. But surely the druids were dealt with once and for all 60 years ago. Uh, as an organized priesthood may be. But you might as well hold off these heathen mists with a palm leaf umbrella as end the druids by destroying their stronghold. They spring up still. Yes, from time to time. And whenever they do, there is likely to be trouble. They preach holy war, ever the most deadly kind. Uh, the frontier tribes here aren't like those on the south coast, who were half Romanized before we ever landed. They're a wild lot, superbly brave. Even they have come to realize that we are not the fiends of darkness. And they know that if they attack the local garrison, it'll only mean a punitive expedition. Their homes and crops burned, and a stronger garrison with a heavier hand thereafter. But let one of these priests lay a hold of them. All that goes whistling down the wind. They cease to think at all. They are keeping faith with their gods by smoking out a nest of unbelievers. And what happens after that is no concern of theirs. For they're going west of the sunset by the warrior's road. And when you get men in that state, there is apt to be trouble. I was born here, you know. That's how I come to have some understanding of these matters. You've had no holy man around here, I suppose? No. But my predecessor did have a certain amount of trouble just before I took over. But the troublemaker slipped through his fingers, disappeared. Oh, for a month or two, we lived on Vesuvius. All the more so as the harvest was bad for the second year running. But the volcano never erupted. A bad harvest. That's the worst time. Ah, oh, well. Girls, Hilarion will be with you soon. And then, Marcus Flavius Aquila. After tonight, it will be for you alone to follow the duty centurion's torch from guard post to guard post, seeing that all is well with the frontier of the Empire. <laughs> How went the patrol, Drusillus? As always, sir. Quietly. Do you find it all very tedious? No, sir. I'm used to it. Life in a Roman garrison tends to be the same, whether you're in a mud fort on the Upper Nile or the stone-built quarters of the Praetorian Guard. Or out here and on the edge of nowhere. Parades, fatigues, patrols out and in, stables, arms drill. No one and you know them all. You're jaded, Drusillus. Been with the legions too long. Yes, sir. I haven't been with them long enough. What did you say? Oh, my apologies, sir. No offence was intended. I believe you. Please sit. You were promoted from the ranks, were you not? Yes, sir. Useful, lad. And to be the, the veteran of many campaigns. Everyone here seems to be more experienced than I am, and they make sure that I know it. Their resentment will soon pass. The better. 
In the meantime, I would like Centurion Galba to understand that no matter what the custom is in other cohorts, the Centurions of the Fourth Gaulish will not accept bribes for letting their men off fatigues. Not while I'm in command. You would wish me to underline the point, sir? As second in command, that would be proper. Sir. Oh, and while we're at it, I note that someone has dagger scratched a drawing on the bathhouse wall. Oh, the leaping wildcat. Yes, rather well done, I think. <laughs> the one I refer to is rather less gifted and bears a resemblance to Centurion Paulus, who is over-fond of using his vine staff on his men's backs. I'll speak to him about it. Thank you, sir. And how went the day with you? Uh, I've spent most of it administering Roman justice. One of the men claimed that a tribesman had sold him a worthless dog. The tribesman came complaining that the garrison had been stealing his poultry. Then I had to sort out a quarrel between the Gauls and the Dacians over some obscure tribal god I'd never even heard of before. Hardly fit work for a soldier. But I fear we may soon have some that will be. How so? There's a rumour that a wandering druid has been seen in the district. Who has seen him? I've tried to find out, but I can get no answer. Not from the tribesmen, not even from those who hold official positions from Rome. If their first loyalty is to Rome, they know nothing. If it's to the tribe, they tell nothing. I go hunting with a Briton, Craddock by name. He's a horse trader. He may know something. is out in the stable with his chariot team. If the commander looks, he will find him. Thank you, Gwendomara. I will. How goes the harvest this year? As last year. And that was bad? As was the year before that. The corn lies thin and shriveled in the ear. Rome is not to be blamed for that. We don't mean much to you, do we? The tribe finds your forum and basilica useful to all their markets in. More than that, surely some have laid aside their hunting spears to become Roman officials. Some. Our craftsmen work hard to please your garrison. We sell you skins, vegetables and fighting cocks. And our children scramble after you for money. But still, we are a new slip grafted onto an old stock and the graft hasn't taken. Gwenamara, I have heard tales of a druid being in the district. I will take you to Craddock. I didn't know you for a charioteer, Craddock. I suppose I might have guessed the British are all charioteers. Commander is mistaken. The British can all drive after a fashion, but not everyone is a charioteer. You, I take it, are. I'm accounted the best of my tribe. Before I left Rome, I was uh, in a fair way to becoming one myself, in your sense of the word. I drove Arabs. Yours are smaller, under 14 hands, I'd say, a little more heavily built. But for all that, without match. Craddock, will you let me try your team? They're not for sale. <laughs> if they were, I couldn't afford to buy them. I asked if I might try them. How good is the commander as a charioteer? I am accounted the best of my legion. Out if you could handle these jewels of mine. Will you take a wager on it? A wager? Well, I will handle your team to your satisfaction over ground of your choosing. This fibula against one of your hunting spears. Or if that doesn't suit you, name your own stakes. I will take your wager. On, brave hearts, on, bold and beautiful, thy mares shall be proud of thee. The tribe shall sing thy praises to their children's children. On, on, my brothers.
Well? The commander begins to be a charioteer. I've never driven a team to better these. Do I win my spear? Choose one for yourself before you return to the fort. These are the jewels of my heart. They're descended out of the royal stables of the Iceni. And there are a few who could handle them better than the commander. Choose. Yes. This one. It shall be this one, for when I hunt boar with your husband this winter. A good spear. That one is to the rest of the sheaf what a king is to his bodyguard. It is a war spear, is it not? It was my father's spear. He had it in his hands when he died. Up yonder under our old ramparts where the fortress walls stand now. See? See, the mark is still upon it. His own blood. And the blood of his enemy. When you get men in that state, there is apt to be trouble. They cease to think at all. They are fighting a holy war. It all seemed very peaceful, Drusillus. Coming back to the fort, I saw children playing, cooked smoke rising from the thatch. Here and there, someone called out an evening greeting to me. But I had an uneasy feeling that underneath the peace, something is stirring. That old war spear, its collar had been lately renewed. I wouldn't worry over much, sir. In all probability, that old war spear has been refurbished many times. Kept right by a son in memory of his father. I can't help wondering in how many of those homesteads down there an old war spear has been put into fighting trim. All this because of a few feathers? A feather might show which way the wind blows. You know, so sitting on a frontier, you can start to imagine things just to relieve the boredom. I wish I could be sure that's all it is. But when Craddock complimented me on the handling of his team, there was a strange note of regret in his voice. And when I spoke to his wife about next winter's hunting, she replied with her eyes as though there would be none. I'll double the guard. Sir, mm -hmm. sir. What is it? The sentry on the south rampart reports sounds of movement between us and the town, sir. You've been up yourself? I have, sir. There's nothing to be seen. But there is something stirring down there for all that. Not even a star on a night like this. You hear anything, sir? Only the whisper of blood in my ears. I heard something then. An owl hunting. No, before that. Someone will be spending a busy day looking for his strayed cattle. All the same, a break out of cattle could make good cover for something else. You're still thinking of new feathers on an old spear. This is my first command. If I'm being a fool, that must excuse me. I'll turn out the cohort to action stations. As quietly as may be. Any further sign of movement? No. 
Am I being every kind of a fool? Am I going to be laughed at so long as my name is remembered in the Legion as the man who doubled the guard because of a bunch of feathers and then turned out his cohort to repel a herd of milk cows? I think I must have gone mad. I shall never live this down. Yeah, better to be a laughing stock than lose the fall for fear of being one. It doesn't pay to take chances on the frontier. And there is a new moon. Give the audits. Second attacks cost us dear, sir. I know, Surgeon. How dear? We've lost upwards of four score men killed and wounded. Sir, they fired the decks to gate, but the damage isn't too bad. How long can we hold out? Several days. With luck. <sighs> Reinforcements could get to us in three. Maybe two from Durin. But there's been no reply to our signal. A little wonder in that, sir. Stronger near a signal station is an obvious precaution. And no Cressic would carry the double distance in this murk. Mithras grant that it clears long enough to give the smoke column a chance to rise. Drusillus, I'm worried about the patrol we have out. They're due back before noon. If the tribesmen haven't dealt with them already, in which case they're beyond our help, or need of it. I think it's more likely that they'll leave them to walk into a trap and cut them to pieces beneath our walls. I've ordered a watch to be kept for them, and they might see the Cressic burning and be warned that there's something wrong. They'll never see a smoke column through this. Then if they win back, we shall, of course, make a sortie and bring them in. Yes, sir. I've issued bread and raisins. You should have breakfast yourself. Thank you. Too much to do. Be ready to start your smother the moment the sky clears. Great God, Mithras. Slayer of the bull. Lord of the ages. Hear the prayer of thy son who bears thy mark. Let the mists part and thy glory shine through. Draw back the mists and grant us clear air for a space that we go not down into darkness. O God of the legions, hear the cry of thy sons. Send down thy light upon us. Even upon us, thy sons of the fourth Gaulish cohort of the second legion.
We'll have breakfast before they come on again. <laughs> Sir, I was on my way to tell you when the attack started. I think our signal's been answered. From where? A day's march to the east. Then in two days, three at the most, relief will be here. Sir, the tribesmen have broken cover. The patrol, they're being sighted. Drusillus? Sir. I must have a half century of the reserves. A trumpeter with them, and every available man on the gate in case they try a rush when we open it. Better let me take them, sir. No, but you can lend me your shield. Stand by and form a testudo! You can leave room for me. This tortoise isn't going into action with his head stuck out. Hey! 